Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to our online students and um, to our in-person students and our e-learning uh, students. Thank you all for uh, uh, joining class this morning. Uh, just praying that you'll have a blessed learning experience um, uh, today, a fruitful one, and that, you know, you will be blessed even as you attend all of the classes that you have today, and you'll have a wonderful day ahead. Uh, we'll begin our uh, class. Uh, can, can I ask one of you to lead us in prayer, please? Anyone? Please go ahead and lead us in prayer. Pooja, can I ask you to lead us in prayer, please? Yes, Pastor. Good morning, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Almighty Father. We thank you, Lord. We come before you, Master God, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for today's day, Lord Master. Thank you, Lord, for today's class, Master Lord. Thank you, Lord, for our pastor, Pastor God, Master. Lord, whatever we going to uh, teach us, uh, God, Master Lord. We pray, help us, the God Master. Help us, the Father God, to learn your word, the God Master. Lord, bless us, Lord Master, your spirit, uh, uh, wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Help us, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, right now in this time, oh God Master. Lord, help us. Give us time, Lord Master. Upon a spiritual ear, oh God Master, to hear your word and to understanding your word, oh God Master. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We praise you, we love you, Father. We honor you, God Master. Lord, we need your presence. We need your we need you, God, Master. Lord, help us to receive your word, Master, and to grow in your word, Master. God, we thank you and we praise you, Master. We give you the glory and honor and praise, Master, Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, uh, Pooja. Uh, so today we'll continue uh, our study of the publication, uh, Receiving God's Guidance. Uh, last week, uh, we completed Chapter 7, uh, where we basically uh, looked at dreams and visions, uh, how the Holy Spirit uh, speaks to us, how God speaks to us through dreams and uh, visions. Uh, today we look at um, other ways where we can, how God guides us, um, other uh, ways how he speaks to us. So today we'll begin with chapter 8, uh, Prophecies. Now prophecy is um, a speaking a message from God which is inspired by the Holy uh, Spirit. And the New Testament, we see that prophecy is one of the gifts of the Spirit and it's available to all believers. And uh, what is this gift of prophecy used for? If uh, you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3, uh, can somebody read that, please? Uh, we'll see what the gift of prophecy is used for uh, and what it brings about uh, even as people speak God's uh, message through prophecy to us. 1 Corinthians 14.3, can somebody read that, please? But he who pro prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. Amen. Thank you, Juliana. So uh, prophecy is basically, you know, uh, used to bring edification. It edifies a person. It edifies the body of Christ. Exhortation exhorts them and also brings comfort to uh, people. Uh, so we already, uh, you know, kind of looked at uh, prophecy in a little bit when we studied the publication, Fulfilling God's Purpose for Our Lives. And we also learned there that, you know, even as uh, we are as believers, you know, when we receive prophecies, we should not despise prophecies. Uh, like it's mentioned in First Thessalonians 5, 20 and 21, it says, do not despise prophecies, but test all things sorry, and hold fast to what is good. So even as we receive prophecies, you know, we must uh, test prophecies. We need to hold on to what is good and discard what is not of the Holy uh, Spirit, okay? So uh, what do we test? We test the source of the inspiration. Uh, if the person is truly speaking from God, or it's their own thoughts, or is it a demonic 
source. Now, how do we know if the person is truly speaking from God or it's from their own thoughts or it's from the demonic source? How do we know? You know, we can't get into their minds and read their minds. But, you know, how do we know it? It's uh, we need to see if the message they have given us through prophecy, whether it is in harmony with the written scripture, whether it goes alongside written scripture, validates scripture. Uh, is it uh, a message that is exalting uh, Jesus Christ? And, you know, um, even as you receive that word of prophecy, you need to go back, ask the Holy Spirit to testify, bear witness in your inner spirit, you know, if this prophecy is truly from, uh, from him, it's truly from God, and if, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, what else the Holy Spirit wants to reveal about that area. And uh, uh, also we can test uh, this, the prophecy that we receive uh, by knowing if the prophecy is aligned to what God has spoken uh, to you, uh, you know, through other ways. If he's, God has spoken to you through the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, to the word of God, if there has been a stirring in your heart, if God is orchestrating circumstances, you're able to see and then you know, yes, you, you know, this prophecy is um, what God has been speaking to me. Uh, it's aligned to what God has spoken uh, uh, to me through other ways as well. And also it's in harmony with written uh, scripture. Now, if uh, I remember receiving a prophecy saying that you will be healed of back pain, uh, this is way many years back, and I did not have any back issues at that time. But how do I know that prophecy is from God? Because God wants to heal, you know, it's accordance with scripture. And um, it is, uh, you know, uh, it's exalting Jesus Christ because when I'm healed, you know, uh, he's exalted. Uh, but I just wrote down this prophecy because it did not apply to me then. But I remember that, you know, a couple of years later uh, when I was going through a back issue and the doctor told me that I had to rest for 15 days. And uh, it was kind of difficult because, uh, you know, I ministered in schools. I go to schools and minister to children. That's where my passion is, my heart is. And I was like, no, God, I can't miss 15 days of school. You know, I have to go and minister to children. And then, you know, suddenly I had this prompting in my heart to uh, go back and look at the old prophecies that I had received. And one of them was you'll be healed of back pain. And I just held on to that, you know, and I uh, I received healing and wholeness uh, when uh, a ministry came from abroad and they were ministering in, in our city and I'd gone for that meeting and they prayed for me and I was healed of my uh, back pain. So that is also, that uh, is something that we can do. You know, if the prophecies align to what God has spoken to us through other ways, you know, uh, it confirms that, yes, it is a, a prophecy that is, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, is valid and we are hence testing that uh, validity of that message that we have received through uh, prophecy. Now, even as we receive prophecies, it's very important that we understand the timing of the uh, prophecy. Okay, uh, It's good to receive prophetic words, but it's important also to know when to act upon it at the right time. I'll give you an example. When we were studying the publication, uh, receiving God's guidance, I said, for example, if Vinay, you know, one of our in-person students, if somebody prophesies over him and says he's going to start a restaurant business and uh, Vinay is excited, and he goes and uh, leaves his job or, you know, uh, stops studying in Bible college, for example. And, you know, he takes a loan and he starts a restaurant. He's very excited. And for the first three months, nobody's coming to his restaurant. Then he seems to be eating all the food that has been cooked uh, in his restaurant. Now, he's wondering, you know, uh, hey, I received this prophetic word. What went wrong? Now, yes, he received the prophetic word, but there is a time, a right time to act upon it. Maybe God has spoken to him in this season of life, something that he's going to do in the next season on the seasons coming and God is revealing it to him so that he prepares you know for it but not just go and jump at it and do it you know suddenly uh, right at the spur of that moment so it's important for us to understand the time of the execution of the prophecy which is as equal as important uh, as understanding the prophecy itself okay 
Now, this, there are several ways in which God can use prophecy to bring guidance to us. You know, uh, for example, you know, a prophetic word can bring about confirmation. Uh, for example, you know, uh, you have been praying about something or you're preparing for a certain decision or you're going down a certain course in your life, you know, and someone uh, who has no idea of these matters that is happening in your life brings a prophetic word and speaks directly into that area area of your life, it's actually confirming the direction in which you are proceeding. It's like God saying, yes, you know, you are going the right way, I want you to go the right way, or you're doing something and God is revealing to the prophetic word that that is not what he has planned for you. There is something else that he has in store. And so that is bringing about also correction. But, you know, prophetic word brings confirmation in the areas that uh, you are pursuing. You're preparing for something or you're making a certain decision in a certain area of your life. And there comes a prophetic word, you know, which confirms the direction uh, in which you can proceed. A prophetic word also gives us direction. God can use prof prophecy to instruct us to doing certain things or going to a certain place, engaging in certain kind of um, uh, activity or certain thing that he wants you to do or leading you in a direction uh, towards, uh, you know, something that he wants you to study, pursue or, or do in uh, life. So prophetic word can also bring direction. And a prophetic word can also bring about a revelation. Now, there are times when people are not aware of, uh, you know, the plans and the purposes, uh, you know, that God has for them. Uh, and it's kind of dormant, it's left unrecognized, or the skills, the talents, the potential that he has placed in them. And so, uh, you know, it's just lying there dormant in their lives. It's not recognized by them. But through a prophetic word, you know, it can God can use that to awaken what has been dormant, what has been left unrecognized, uh, and God can unveil to them the plans and the purposes that He has for them uh, in their lives and concerning their uh, future. So God can use prophecy uh, to reveal things about the future so that the person can uh, prepare. Now, like I said, all of these things. Um, you know, it's good we receive prophetic uh, confirmation, direction, revelation, but all must be tested before uh, it's been accepted. And I, I told you uh, how it can be tested, you know, if it's uh, uh, according to the word of God, if it is exalting Jesus Christ, uh, if the Holy Spirit is also bearing inner witness, and also if it is aligned to what God has spoken to you uh, uh, in the past in different uh, ways. Now, even though prophecy is good, we must not go around prophetic shopping, which means we must not go around just seeking for prophecy. You know, um, let God just speak to you at the time and through whomever he uh, chooses. But when he speaks, you know, uh, test the prophecy, receive it, test it, and, you know, uh, ask God for direction and leading uh, to know the exact time on which to act on it. Okay. So that was chapter eight. Any questions? Very short chapter. Any questions before we move on to chapter nine? Yes, Shani. You said don't go around looking for a prophecy. If prophecy is trying to tell people about your future, it's because you want people to go to the word to find out more. Is that the reason why you said they're going around looking for prophecy? Yes. Uh, you know, uh, when we go around prophetic shopping or, you know, just looking at going around asking people to prophesy over our lives, it can also lead us to the wrong kind of people. Uh, it can mess up our lives, you know, or when we are not able to uh, have the discernment to test uh, things. Uh, but also why go around prophetic shopping when God himself, the Holy Spirit is there in you, living in you. He can bear inner witness. You know, the Holy Spirit speaks, reveals the heart and the mind and the plan and the purposes of God to us. So, you know, instead of depending on people, depend on God to hear from him, uh, you know, depend on his word to lead you and guide you. I'm not saying in that sense, you know, when you receive a prophecy, it's wrong. You don't take it. No, when it when God moves, when he speaks to people and he wants to, you know, uh, 
uh, inform you of something which you are not being you know able to understand uh, uh, you're praying about then it's fine you know it just comes to you you receive it but what i'm saying is don't go around running behind people asking them you depend on god you trust uh, him to speak to you you and also to you know to speak to you through his word yes okay thank you okay if there are no more questions uh, we'll move on to uh, chapter 9 angels now we know that angels uh, were very active during bible times and during the early church and they are still active uh, today now we might be uh, wondering why do we have to study about angels uh, to receive god's guidance uh, when we uh, study both the old and the new testament we see god you know using angels to send messages to his people uh, to guide them direct them uh, reveal what god is planning uh, for them to do and ex and also explain the meaning of visions they receive from uh, god so angels are still around uh, god will still send them on assignments for us for his people uh, so we need to also be willing to uh, you know, uh, receive from them uh, God's message and what he has to speak to us. So if you look at uh, the New Testament, oh, we see, you know, uh, angelic ministry ministering to various people. You know, the a uh, angel announced to Mary that she would have a child through the power of the Holy Spirit. And the angel also appeared to Joseph in a dream, uh, instructing him to take Mary um, as his wife and also in a dream an angel appears to joseph at another time and instructs him to go to egypt and not go back to uh, you know uh, 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 to nazareth uh, for the safety of baby uh, jesus we also see a lot of angelic activity in the early church um, uh, that is recorded for us in the book of acts we see in acts we read in acts chapter 5 that an angel uh, delivered peter from prison and instructed him to go and preach in the temple. Uh, we also see that angel directed Philip, uh, you know, to go down to Gaza in Acts chapter 18. He says, uh, go and, you know, um, overtake the chariot and uh, you know philip preaches the gospel to uh, the person sitting in the chariot who is in, from ethiopia and we know the gospel was um, uh, taken to ethiopia by him because he he received the gospel and he was also baptized by uh, philip an angel also appeared to cornelius who was a gentile we read this in acts chapter 10 uh, he was a very devout uh, gentile and uh, the angel directed him to send uh, you know men uh, to uh, uh, to Joppa, where Peter was staying, uh, and to have him uh, brought to uh, Cornelius's house, and we see the impact of what happened there. That you know um, the gospel was. Uh, minister to or share to the uh, gentiles and uh, you know even before uh, peter gave the altar call people were uh, who gathered in cornelius's house were cut in their heart and they were baptized by the holy uh, spirit we also see the angel releasing uh, peter from his chains and took him out of prison acts chapter 12 uh, acts chapter 12 verse 23 we also see how herod was stuck uh, uh, struck by an angel and he died and um, uh, in Acts chapter 27, we read how an angel appeared to Paul when he was sailing to Rome. Uh, they were caught in a terrible uh, storm. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, even though they lost a lot of cargo on the ship, uh, uh, the angel came to appear to Paul saying that and assuring him that no life will be uh, uh, lost. Okay. Uh, uh, and Paul was taken as a prisoner uh, to Rome to appear before uh, Caesar. So we see that angels uh, appeared to all of these people, you know, gave them guidance, direction, what they had to do, confirmation, uh, encouragement. So angels can also appear to us. They can either speak uh, audibly or they can speak to us uh, without being visible or they can be visible at times or they can speak to us in our dreams as well, like we saw uh, in the case of uh, Joseph, okay? And angels can influence our thoughts or put thoughts in our mind, just like demons can tempt us and put wrong or evil thoughts in our um, minds, okay? And when angels speak, we can hear them in the uh, to the ears of our spirit man. I told you that just like our 
uh, physical man has the five senses, our spirit man also has five senses, and we can receive information through um, uh, from God, uh, from the Holy Spirit, from angels through our five senses. So, you know, when they speak, uh, we can hear them to the ears of our, uh, uh, our spirit, okay? Um, Oftentimes, uh, you know, uh, when we are worshiping, we can also uh, experience the ministering of angels amongst us. But ev uh, even as we are open and aware of uh, angelic activity around us, uh, there are some things that we need to keep in mind. Uh, we do not worship angels. We worship only uh, Jesus. We worship only God, the Lord Most High. Uh, we don't worship angels uh, because they are created beings. They are just sent on assignment uh, from God with messages and, you know, pro uh, protecting us or guiding us and telling us what to do. Okay, we also do not seek after angelic visitation. Our focus must remain on Jesus, must remain on God. Uh, we must ask him for his guidance, for his leading, uh, for his help. And he will do what, uh, you know, uh, is necessary. But we don't seek after angelic uh, visitations. And we must discern uh, angelic visitations because we know that Satan and his demons can also imitate uh, um, and come as angels of light. Um, so we need to discern. How do we discern? You know, if... Um, it's in uh, what they're saying or asking us to do is in alignment with God's word, uh, also to the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. And also uh, we know through scripture what is right and um, wrong. Okay. Um, yes, we can ask God for assist, uh, his angels to assist us when we are, you know, uh, leaving home and you're traveling, uh, uh, you know, uh, according to what he has, uh, you know, said in his word, Psalm 91. Uh, but we just, you know, ask God and not the angels and we trust in God for his protection and his guidance and his leading. Okay, uh, when we speak God's promises, uh, uh, declaring what his angels will do in, in our lives, uh, you know, uh, uh, they respond to the voice of his word and they do likewise. Okay, so that is about uh, angels. Uh, chapter nine, again, a very short chapter. Any questions on angels? Yes, Shani. How do you know in terms of, you say angels can appear as audibly, how do you know um, if it's angels or whether it's like the Lord speaking to you? How do you kind of differentiate when it's audible? Or oh, the audible voice uh, uh, of the angels or whether it's uh, God speaking? That's what you're yes. saying? Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, a good question. Um, uh, you know, uh, actually, when angels appeared to uh, Mary and Joseph and uh, to uh, Peter and Cornelius and Paul, uh, you know, uh, uh, they were able to see uh, these angelic uh, beings because they took on a human uh, form uh, in terms of appearance, human-like appearance. So they appeared like angelic beings. And so uh, uh, they were able to know that, you know, uh, this is an angel uh, speaking to us. And again, if we want to, you know, uh, angels are sent by God. They're messengers of God. They're sent with uh, God's message. And it will always be in alignment with what God wants to to speak to us and so you know um, uh, that is another way we can also know that uh, you know if it's aligned with God's word also to the inner witness of the Holy Spirit we can ask the Holy Spirit to testify and also knowing if it's going to glorify God did that help Shani yes I guess that's kind of answered the question about it says they can speak to us without being you know being visible I guess that kind of answers also the same, the same question also because I know you gave the example in terms of the angel appearing to Mary, but if the angel is not appearing to you, they can speak to us uh, without being visible. I guess you're saying to just try to see if it aligns up with the word of word of God. Yes. Yes. Okay. And through the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Alias. You have your hand up. Can unmute your mic and speak. Sorry, ma'am. Sorry. Okay, no worries. Yeah. Any more questions on angels?
No question? Okay. Raju says, what is angelic ministry and angels are to serve us? Can we see guardian angels? Um, yes, uh, angelic ministry, angels are basically sent by God, uh, you know, to give us uh, messages, like I said, you know, a uh, message of uh, guidance, um, you know, uh, also guiding us, directing us, revealing to us what is God's plan, uh, also can explain uh, the visions that we receive from God. So this is all uh, uh, the ministry of angels. They also protect us and guard us, like we read in Psalm 91. Uh, uh, can we see guardian angels? Um, we usually don't see them, but if you want to see them, you know, you can ask God to open your eyes to see them because you want to see them. You can ask God to do that, yes, and he would. Yeah, some people uh, see uh, angels around them, have seen, uh, you know, when they've gone through, um, uh, uh, when they face accidents. I remember when I was preaching once, uh, uh, one lady told me that, you know, she could see angels all around me when uh, at the pulpit. So she was able to see angels, yes. So if you want to see angels, you can ask God to open your eyes to see them. Uh, yes. Shani? Yes, Shani, you have your hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I just, okay, just going back to the question about in terms of hearing the uh, uh, angels of the Lord. I know you said that an angel will always align with the word of God, but when the Lord speaks, he would also. So how do you really, I'm a little bit confused on how you know the difference. Uh, so the difference between uh, what angels are speaking and how God is speaking yeah, That's in terms what? of you knowing different, yeah, differentiate between the two. Because I didn't even know that angels can speak to now. I'm just like, I know that, um, I know you said align with the word of God, but the Lord would say something too that will also align with the Lord. So how do you really know? Uh, can you say that again, what you said just now? I was saying that the angel, you said the angel will speak, will always align up with the word of God. But when the Lord speaks, he will also do the same. From my understanding, yes. so how, yes. would you, how would you differentiate? So that you know who, if it's the angel or whether the Lord is speaking to you. Uh, so, you know, just like, uh, uh, you know, the Old Testament, we see God often spoke directly to individuals such as Moses, the burning bush, uh, Samuel when he was a boy. And, uh, you know, these moments uh, were clearly uh, marked by divine authority, you know, uh, and it it was, uh, you know, uh, had involved uh, profound revelations, commandments, and covenant uh, promises. Uh, we see in the New Testament, uh, God also speaks directly, um, uh, such as when, you know, the Father spoke at Jesus' baptism and at the transfiguration. And uh, Christians, you know, uh, our believers, we believe that God often speaks to us through the inner witness of the Holy uh, Spirit, that we already have studied that in, 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 in the chapter and providing us personal guidance and uh, conviction, how the Holy Spirit guides uh, the believers and speaks uh, 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 in our spirit man, speaks to our heart. Uh, and we see that, you know, as uh, the angels, you know, um, they're sent as messengers, uh, you know, to uh, deliver God's word or instruction. So when an angel is speaking, they are delivering a message on God's behalf. Um, and, you know, uh, uh, they can they can even say that, you know, uh, like, for, for example, Gabriel spoke to Mary and he identified himself as an angel, not uh, God. OK, uh, and so we see that you know, angels tend to introduce themselves like Gabriel, Michael, uh, you know, uh, to convey the message with uh, clarity. Uh, for example, even when uh, uh, the archangel appeared to Daniel, you know, uh, uh, says, do not be afraid, you know, uh, tells Daniel, tells uh, Mary. Uh, so, you know, they just reassure that they have come from uh, God. Now, when God speaks, especially in the Old Testament or through the words of Jesus, um, 
there's a sense of ultimate authority and there's that sense of personal relationship um, okay but when angels on the other hand when they deliver specific uh, instructions or revelations you know uh, 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 you know or revelations as uh, people who are as beings who've come from god you know uh, uh, they might you know direct that uh, direct that individual to act on something and they can point back to god as a source of the uh, message okay okay and thank you when for... angels come to speak to us they appear in a uh, physical form like you know when they visited abraham or the shepherds or announcing the birth of jesus to the shepherds uh, or when they appear to the women at the empty uh, tomb Okay, thank you. That clarifies. But you, you said when they come, they usually come in a, you can see them. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, you can see them. Even if they you don't see them, they will confirm that, you know, this message is from God. Yes. They will oh, okay, see. okay. You said yes. somebody can see Yeah, because I know it says they can speak without being visible. Okay, yes. yes. Okay, that clarifies a lot. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, angels will talk with us and also demonic and also speak through us to the word. How can we discern both of this? Yeah, like, uh, thank you for your question, Sukesh. Like I said, yes, angels can speak to us. De uh, uh, demons can also speak to us. But, you know, uh, uh, when demons speak to us, how do we know whether it is uh, demon speaking or whether it's an angel speaking or God speaking? Is when angels speak, it's always aligned with uh uh, God's word, his promises, his nature, his covenant. Uh, but when demons speak, it will not be aligned to uh, God's word. They might speak the truth like they spoke, uh, like they spoke to um, uh, Eve, but it will be half truth. Okay, it'll be a half truth. Like uh, uh, Satan told uh, Eve, you know, if you eat of this fruit, you will surely not die. But that was not the truth. God said, if you eat from this tree, you would surely uh, die right so what uh, uh, satan spoke was half truth so how do we uh, uh, confirm if it is from uh, god speaking or uh, a demon speaking you know first of all go back to god's word and also ask the holy spirit to reveal uh, to you and we've looked at various ways how we can uh, you know uh, confirm whether it's the holy spirit uh, speaking to us okay i hope that helped Pastor, I have a, a question on understanding angels a bit more. Yes. The, inci the incidence of uh, Abraham being visited by three men. And then yes. as the discussion progresses, Abraham is referring to them as my Lord. By the yes. time the story ends, we discover that it was actually the Lord who visited him. So yes. we, we don't, from there, we don't understand do angels sometimes are angels sometimes referred to as Lord and yeah it's a bit confusing in that story yes a uh, good question um thank you Juliana uh, yes Abraham was actually visited both uh, by the Lord and the angels we read that in uh, Genesis chapter 18 you know um the Lord appears to Abraham. The passage begins by saying the Lord appeared to Abraham when he was sitting by the oaks of uh, uh, Mamre. And, you know, um, so it was the Lord himself. And, you know, it's often uh, when when the, there's a manifestation of the Lord himself, it's understood as theophany, an appearance of God in human form. And then in the same chapter we read in verse 2, Abraham looks up and sees three men standing there and he runs to meet them. And the Bible identifies these men as angels uh, later on uh, in, 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 in the next chapter, Genesis chapter 19, verse 1, where two of them continue to Sodom to meet uh, Lot. And the third figure is understood to be the Lord who stays behind to speak with um, Abraham. So one of the visitors referring, uh, who's referred to as the Lord, tells Abraham that Sarah will have a, a son with uh, within a year. Okay, so that visitor is speaking with divine authority and tells Abraham, uh, and is, hence Abraham addresses him as Lord, identifies him as God himself. And then we see that, you know, um, uh, uh, to the two angels head off to Sodom and uh, uh, Abraham continues to speak with the uh, Lord. And these angels are later identified in Genesis chapter 19 as uh, verse 1 as ones who go to Sodom to warn uh, Lot. Yes. 
So we see that, you know, uh, the Lord Yahweh visited Abraham in human form, accompanied by two uh, angels. While uh, the Lord stayed back to speak with Abraham, the two angels uh, went ahead uh, to Sodom. Did that help? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, Shani, has an angel ever spoken uh, uh, to you? Uh, no, I've not heard angels uh, speaking to me or, uh, you know, maybe they've spoken, but I thought this as the Holy Spirit or, you know, or the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. Um, uh, but I know that angels have uh, protected me. There are times when I could have met with accidents and I know that angels have protected me. Um, I remember once I went for a mission trip to North India and when we were traveling to the place where we are supposed to minister, I remember that I, I suddenly started singing this uh, song, uh, The Lord of Angel Armies is Always by My Side. I kept singing that uh, that over and over and over again as we were traveling loudly in the, in the, in the car and it's one why I was just singing that song out of the blue and when we went you know um, uh, I was going to sit on a chair and somebody accidentally pulled the chair from behind and I sat you know thud on the ground it was uh, not a uh, it was a very you know it was a, what we call in India is like a kacha ground it's not uh, uh, smooth it's it's very hard surface um, and uh, when I, uh, uh, then everyone was shocked and, you know, there were two doctors, they took me and they asked me, if there was pain all over and, you know, I, I, I said I was not experiencing any pain. So they said maybe in a shock and then later on when you experience some pain, you tell us. And then, you know, after two hours, you know, I was just sitting there, uh, the meeting, I suddenly realized that when I sat on the ground, I did not hit hard floor, but I, I sat on something that was soft and cushiony. And then going back, I realized I've seen that song, The Lord of Angel Armies is always by my side and everything uh, just made sense. Yeah. So that was just an experience that I had. Um, Sukesh says, is it possible for angels to transform into humans and come to us in some uh, situations? Uh, no, angels don't uh, transform into uh, humans, but you know, like I said, um, you know, angels can take uh, uh, human like appearance so that we can uh, discern, uh, we can see, we can understand uh, and per perceive uh, with our uh, minds. Yeah. Did that help? Yes, no. Okay. Okay, thank you, Suresh. Genesis, Noah's time, scripture says, God uh, sons did sin with human daughters. So that what about God's sons, did they eat angels? Did they eat angels? Sorry, Sukesh, I'm not able to. You're talking about Noah's time. Um, no, it was, uh, it was basically, you know, talking about... Uh, I'm not able to understand your question. If you could just help me with that, please. Maybe you can retype your question. That will help. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, going back to uh, Sukesh's question, uh, yes, angels can manifest in physical forms, but they still retain their identity as uh, angels. Uh, you know, so they appear in angelic uh, uh, appearance, human-like appearance, so that you know humans can perceive them and understand. Yes. Okay. Till Sukesh types his question, maybe we can move ahead and then I can answer his question. Okay, if there are any more questions from anyone about angels? Pooja, you have your hand up? Uh, yes, Pastor, thank you. Uh, Pastor, uh, my question is the uh, Acts, Acts 2, verse 17, 18. Mm -hmm. yeah, can you help me, Pastor? Uh, the word of God says, in the end time, I will pour out my spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
and you will propose you will see the dreams and vision everything so mm-hmm. uh, why uh, why a believer not uh, believe the word of god why a believer does not uh, believe the word of god i mean that we will have dreams and visions that's what yes, you're asking god. yes if it means uh, if god is used for some people mm-hmm. some people uh, the word of god say i will pour out my spirit okay mm-hmm. so 17 yeah mm-hmm. then 18 uh, you will see the vision dreams mm-hmm. you will prophesy yeah the, but when when god when god chose the some person and when god used that person then why i believe in our church only Mm-hmm. why they doesn't like and they turn leave uh, yeah yes god uh, god god can use anybody yeah god can speak anybody means they like you know like jealous <laughs> yes uh, that's sad i think it's also because uh, they don't want to uh, believe the word of god they want don't want to see the truth in god's word also because of uh, the wrong uh, interpretation of scripture also um, cultural traditions uh, uh, that have come about like only a pastor knows everything only a pastor is a minister the lay people are not ministers of god have nothing to do with preaching and teaching and evangelizing and a missionary work so it's also cultural upbringing it's also the beliefs of the church that has you know uh, the denominational beliefs that have been passed down uh, through generations and also the failure of us ministers you know uh, to study god's word to interpret scripture in the context rightly and to hear from god and teach people and to equip uh, people yes and also even if they understand and they are able to know that you know all believers can manifest the gifts all believers can preach all believers are the royal priesthood god has called everyone uh, like you said you know it's the heart attitudes and the motives that are wrong uh, which we need to pray for them that god will change their hearts yes thank you thank you pastor yes thank you Okay we'll uh, if no there are no more questions we'll move on to chapter 10 and Sukesh if you can just type your question out and I can uh, uh, answer it okay we'll move on to chapter 10 godly counsel okay um so we've already studied this in uh, fulfilling god's purpose so i'm just going to quickly uh, go through it uh, you know i said uh, even uh, when we studied about god the counsel in the previous publication that god can uh, use people to speak into our lives uh, to guide us and lead us um, uh, look at what proverbs 19:21 says can somebody read that please proverbs 19:21 there are many plans in a man's heart nevertheless the lord's counsel that will stand amen thank you sobagya so god guides us with his counsel and this is often brought through people and we need to receive counsel from people who know the ways of god who can, who understand the ways of god who uh, are uh, have uh, an intimate relationship with god who understand the heart of god and also you know uh, living with the wisdom of uh, god okay so we'll just look at a few scriptures from proverbs that teaches the value and the importance of godly counsel so can one of you please read proverbs 11:14 some of uh, one more can be ready with proverbs 15:22 and then someone else can read proverbs 19 uh, uh 20 and someone else proverbs 20:18 so can someone read, please read um uh proverbs 11:14 please for there is no counsel the people fall but in the multitude of counselors there is safety Amen. So, you know, uh, it says here that you know, we when we receive right counsel, it puts us in a place of safety and strength and we uh, basically uh, receive or draw from uh, the person's the person who's counseling us, we draw from their experience, uh, we learn from uh, their way of life and how they live their life and we also receive uh, wisdom from them. Okay? Proverbs 15:22 Can somebody read that, please? Yes, go ahead. 
without council plans go away, but in the multitude of councillors, they are established. Amen. So uh, it's, you know, sometimes we have great ideas, you know, uh, to do things, to implement things in our life. And, uh, you know, uh, but we also need counsel uh, or right input from the right kind of people and how to, uh, you know, uh, uh, bring, go about establishing that idea to bring that about in reality. Uh, so often, you know, we would need the uh, input of several people, you know, uh, uh, because the more information that we have, the idea that we want to generate or we want to implement or bring about in reality uh, would help us to do things in the right way and benefit us and benefit others as uh, well. Proverbs 19.20, can somebody read that, please? Listen to counsel and receive instruction that you may be wise in your latter days. Amen. So here at uh, Proverbs 19.20, thank you. It says we need to listen to counsel uh, uh, and we need to receive instruction from people, you know, because when we do that, it makes us wise in the days that are uh, to come in the future, in our future as well. Okay. Now, sometimes, uh, you know, some of us, uh, you know, don't like to be told what to do. Uh, we don't want someone controlling us. Uh, you can say, I don't want anyone controlling me. I don't uh, like to be told what to do. You know, I think I can figure out this myself, you know, and uh, we want to be independent. Um, uh, but it takes humility to be willing to listen, uh, to receive instruction. And if we humble ourselves, you know, uh, to receive uh, instruction, receive guidance, even receive uh, uh, correction uh, when, we, uh, when we're doing things uh, that are wrong, it will only help us. It will benefit us in the long run. It makes us better people in the uh, uh, better people and also helps us to live life uh, more purposefully and also, you know, devoid of unnecessary confusions and problems that we will uh, face. Okay. Okay. Uh, can someone else please read Proverbs 2018, please? Plans are established by counsel, but wise counsel wage war. Amen. Thank you, Shani. So uh, the counsel we receive is like uh, weapons, you know, that help us to uh, gear up for the battle. So, you know, uh, uh, this verse is saying that when we go uh, into a fight armed with counsel from wise people, you know, whatever it is, whether we are going through challenging situations, difficult situations, we're facing uh, some problems, uh, or we are fighting a battle in our life, or we're trying to make the right choice, the right decision, uh, you know, uh, you can press into victory, you know, when you receive receive uh, the right counsel from the right kind of uh, people, okay? Now, uh, it's important uh, whom you receive counsel from. I've already spoken about uh, that. Um, so there are sometimes, you know, we can go to experts in the, uh, in the field of education, career, finance, legal matters. They might not necessarily be, you know, uh, believers, but, you know, they can tell us and guide us uh, on what to do. But at the same time, if they tell us to do things that are, uh, you know, uh, uh, not the values or what is the standard in God's word, we can leave that part out and we can do, you know, what they are asking us to do. So suppose they're telling us to write wrong figures, write, do wrong things, or if it's a legal case, they're telling us to do some things that are wrong. At that time, you can tell them, hey, this is my stand. This is my belief. I don't want to do anything that's wrong. Is there another way of doing things uh, that will help me? And I'm sure they will find out something else. If not, you can go to another uh, expert who can um, help you. Okay. Yes, Shani. Oh, no, I'm just, well, my end, you were frozen and then your words were cutting out. Okay. Are all of you able to hear me clearly? Now I can, but just when I message, yes, you I can couldn't. hear you clearly. Okay. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay. Anytime if, if I'm uh, getting cut or, you know, you lost me, uh, you can just uh, quickly uh, tell me, then I would, uh, you know, 
uh, repeat what I have uh, uh, missed out or what you haven't heard. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Shani. Uh, so, you know, it's important that we uh, receive counsel, not only in the areas where we need guidance and help. And, you know, even in the areas where we receive guidance and help, we can choose to take the counsel that, you know, uh, aligns to our thinking, what we affirm, what we are inclined to. But if there is counsel that tells us otherwise to do things that we don't want to, we are not happy about, or if there's counsel that comes through correction, then we have tendency not to receive it, but that is wrong. And we need to, you know, heed uh, counsel, even uh, if it does not uh, appeal to our senses or what we are thinking or we what we like or what we are inclined to, or even receive a correction uh, from godly counsel. Okay, we'll stop here, we'll go for our break, and then we'll come back after the break and continue. Thank you.